everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Young Grown Ups Video Transmission. I'm your host, Mark, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Diamond Select, Star Trek Select, The Next Generation, Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Um, this is the third figure uh, in the Star Trek Select series after the original, um, the classic series, Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock figures, which we looked at last year. So this will be the third figure in the line. And uh, I'm, I'm only assuming that the fourth figure in the line, which has not been announced yet, will probably be uh, another figure from the Next Generation series. And I'm my guess is that it's going to be Riker. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be number one. Um, I'm almost positive of that. Um, although the only clue that we've been given by Diamond Select is that they said that the Borg base that Captain Picard comes with will somehow interact with the second figure or the, the fourth figure in this line, the second figure to come out from the Next Generation series. So we'll probably see this figure revealed at Toy Fair. That'd be my guess. We're almost in February here in 2014 already. So Toy Fair is just around the corner. So we'll probably see it then. Getting these guys out of the way... I do want to show you that Picard doesn't come nearly as accessoried as, um, even if accessory is even a word, I'm not even sure, but he doesn't come as with as many accessories, parts, pieces, interchangeable pieces at all, um, as Kirk and Spock did. And you know that you could switch hands, swap heads, you could swap, um, lower torso, lower legs. You could do a lot of customization with those figures. Um, Picard, uh, not so much, but, um, we're going to get him open in just a second. Just want to take you around the package real quick. Nice drawing of uh, Patrick Stewart right there as he portrays Jean-Luc Picard. And then here on the back, you can see the figure on the board base. Um, you can see Kirk and Khan. This would be the deluxe version of Kirk and the deluxe version of Spock that comes with the extra legs and head and, um, the uh the uh, the ground accessory there um and then you can see the uh, the write up right here which um i'm not going to take the time to read so hopefully it is legible maybe not uh um from this and if if it is please pause the video and read to do so um but otherwise, I want to get this guy opened up because I have been long waiting for this figure since it was revealed last year. I can't wait to get him cracked open. I've heard that he can swap parts with the classic figures. It may look a little weird because the pants are always going to be different. But uh, let's see what this guy can do. Let's get him out, get him opened up, and take a closer look. Okay, so here we have uh, Picard opened up out of the package, and this is everything he comes with, um, with the exception of this little um, pamphlet here that's got um, some cross-sell um, ships, and on the other side, it looks like it's got some role-play um, accessories here. Um, it doesn't even have cross-sell um, for the other two figures in this line, but that's probably because they're on the back of the package. So... Um, as you can see, he doesn't come with any interchangeable lower tor torso, any exchangeable heads, interchangeable heads, or even hands. And while that's okay, I, I, I guess, I mean, they sort of set a precedent with the figures in the first, the first two figures, Kirk and Spock, um, sort of set a precedent with these interchangeable body parts. But I, I guess it's okay if they want to move away from that or, or maybe at least just move away from it for one figure release. But um, one of the things that's kind of disappointing is the fact that this phaser doesn't even come out of his hand. Um, the hand does rotate, um, but the phaser is molded into the hand. I would have at least liked for the phaser to, to come out. Maybe to attach to his belt, um, maybe for there to have been like a little um, plug-in holster or something like that, or maybe just a hand without the phaser if you want to sculpt it in there. Um, that would have been nice. But um, as, as it is... This arm does have an articulation point at the shoulder. Um, it's got a um, it's got a pin socket, um, so it can go um, it can go you know up and down a little bit, and it can go all the way around. But for the most part, you really can only put it in. You know, it only really looks good in that position. There's no other articulation point. Um, a cut swivel would have been nice anywhere along. Would have been really nice, um, like this one here. I believe this arm didn't have a cut joint at all um, and I believe that after it was shown or late last year I believe fans started writing in 
and Diamond Select, uh, I do remember a blog post from them saying that they listened to the fans and went ahead and added a cut joint right here so you can at least get some sort of, you know, motion of moving the hand around here. This shoulder, like the other shoulder, does have a pin socket so you can go, you know, bring it in close to the chest. You can bring it out up higher. Um, you can, you, you do have a little bit of um, more mobility um, with that there. And because of... Um, the um, swappable lower torso with the first figures. Um, the torso is on a full swivel. The head's also on a nice little ball joint, which is really cool. We're going to zoom in and take a look at this head sculpt because I'm kind of on the fence uh, on this head sculpt. I mean, um, you know, Diamond Select has made a has has made a, a pretty big deal about the head sculpt and everything, but um, I don't know. I don't I don't think it's all the way there. So we'll zoom in and look at that. Um, and we'll also zoom in and take a closer look at the um, at the base. But while we're talking our while we're talking articulation, um, that's it. Um, no other points. So you have the head is one. The shoulder would be two. The the arm at the top of the bicep would be three. Each hand would be four or five. Uh, here at this arm would be um, six, and then the waist would be seven. That's it. No foot articulation, no ankle, no knee, no cut joints anywhere else. The legs are static as they are, just like with the first wave. Um, other than I do believe the first wave had cut joints at the top of the boots, um, but the legs were static. Um, so that's about it for the figure, uh, and it's um, seven points of articulation. And then you have the base and this is, um, a Borg, um, ship base. It's got two foot pegs for Picard to stand on nicely painted lights of green and red, um, uh, and silver paint apps, some silver dry brushing all around nice detail. And then you can see on here is both a Borg arm and a Borg upper torso. Um, now both of these pieces are removable. Um, and they do have little plugs that they fit in and we'll zoom in and take a closer look at these Borg pieces here in just a second, but you can remove the arm. Um, it plugs right in and you can remove the torso. Um, I would have preferred honestly for them not to have put plugs on here and just let us lay the parts where we wanted to. Um, so at least, um, like this, um, upper torso wouldn't have this, you know, full blown, like peg sticking out of his chest. It looks kind of odd. Um, and you know, since they've foregone, any other extra articulation on Picard, maybe having the Borg's head articulate would have been nice, but um, sort of like with um, Khan, um, he didn't have a lot of articulation uh, at all um, with Kirk either, so they've sort of set their precedent for how they're going to do these extra deluxe bases. Now, as before, and you know, we looked at this with the Kirk and Spock, they had a online uh, release separate from the in-store retailer release. The, uh, the deluxe versions with, you know, the con and the engineering room with Kirk and the deluxe um, Horta uh, cave uh, base and extra body parts, those were all deluxe figures that were sold online only, like at Amazon or um, uh, Star Trek's uh, uh, Diamond Select's website. Um, but um, if you went into, like, Toys R Us, they had a pared-down version um, of both of those figures that didn't come with all the extra parts and pieces and deluxe bases. So I don't know if that's going to continue to be the case or if that's why we're seeing such a pared-down version of Picard. Um, I don't know if this is how he's going to be sold in stores. Um, you know, with this Borg base, I would assume that he would be. And so maybe what they're doing is maybe they're... Um, Maybe uh, Diamond Select is just making one version of these figures now to sell and stop doing two different versions. Okay, so zooming in here on uh, the head sculpt, you can see that um, there's been some... There's been a lot of talk about this head sculpt. Um, Diamond Select says it's one of the be best head sculpts they've ever done. And, um, I, I, I mean, I can't really agree with that. I would say that, you know, they've done a good job of getting the... the the shape of his head, correct. You know, he had, Patrick Stewart's got a very odd-shaped head, a very specifically shaped head, let me say that. Um, and I will say that in certain positions, this head sculpt is is pretty dang good. Um, but in others, um, it really kind of stands out how it doesn't look a lot like Patrick Stewart. Um, I think if you were to cover up the lower half of his head. I think I think the problem lies in the lips and the chin. I think that's pretty spot on, Patrick Stewart. 
um, you take that away, and I and I think that that's where the problem starts creeping in. I think it's the the lips, the size of the mouth, and maybe the chin area um, that I think is probably just not all together there because I, I cover it up. Sorry, there's a lot of light in here. I cover that up and that looks pretty good to me. So um, one of the other things that's kind of disappointing is let me turn this around and that's the pretty shoddy paint job on the back of his hair. Now, there's no, I mean, this looks like a dog that's got mange. I mean, this this does not look like um, a light coating of white hair. I mean, there's huge sections of the back of his head that are not even painted. I know it's supposed to be a light dusting of hair, but come on. I mean, there's huge chunks of hair missing um, that's clearly sculpted there. Um, I would have rather that been a full um, painted back. So I'm not, I'm not too pleased with the paint apps on the back of the head. Luckily, not looking at the back of the head too, too often. So, um, you know, I, I think if you get some tilted down shots, I think it, it looks pretty good. Um, but all in all, I can't say that these, that this head sculpt is better than the Spock head sculpt, um, from the first wave. And we all know that Kirk really didn't look a whole lot like Kirk. He just kind of looked like a generic person. He, he looked like a caricature of Kirk. Um, but for the most part, I would say this is probably 75% there. Um, but again, you know, this is, it is simply, you know, a seven inch scale figure. So, you know, they don't have too much real estate to work with, but you know, it sort of is what it is. You can see the nice paint apps on the, uh, on the collar. You can see his rank right there on the collar. And of course, um, the paint apps for the communicator, uh, emblem on his chest. I do want to move along, um, and show you the, the blaster, the phaser, um, that's in his hand. And, um, you know, some nice paint apps on that. The paint apps are clean and crisp. The lines are clean. You can see, let me turn it over a little bit. It's nicely detailed. Again, I do sort of wish that, um, that it was not, you know, sculpted into his hands. So, um, I'm going to pull the, the Borg hand accessory off of the base and, uh, sort of move it back to where you can see it. So you can see a lot of nice detail sculpted in and painted uh, into this Borg accessory. Um, you can see lots of tiny wires and things moving around in there. And overall, I, I think this is a really well done accessory. You see the two different types of tubing and wiring coming out the end, and they're sort of like a soft, soft plastic. So um, nothing's articulated, no articulation points on the, on the arm. Pretty cool, pretty cool accessory. Now, let me pull the, the torso off and let's take a look at that. What would have been really nice is, is if this arm could have reattached or connected somehow back to the, uh, the torso or the upper arm. That would have been pretty nice. Um, so, you know, you, you've got this Borg here uh, and you guys know about the Borg. So they're all kind of pieced and put together and... Um, they all sort of look different, and this one's got some really nice detail uh, in the head. Kind of a sleepy, kind of dopey look uh, on his face. But really nice detail in paint apps just to be a, a plugged-in accessory on a base, you know. Um, moving down, you can see the torso. There's the big plug where it plugs into the base. Uh, and then some of the uh, the damaged parts um, that... Uh, where he's been sort of severed, maybe shot in half by a uh, Picard. Um, um, again, no articulated um, parts or pieces. It's just one big solid chunk of plastic that happens to be uh, removable, and he lays like this on the base. So um, I do want to zoom in on the base here just a little bit. While we're zoomed in, I'll show you some of the, the closer details of it. On the side, you can see some lighter painted silver, some... Uh, some that it's sort of a matte finish, some it's a little more glossy. See a nice silver wash over the top. Nice details all around. And then you've even got some green and red paint apps uh, here and there. Okay, so with Kirk and Spock, um, especially since I bought 
the deluxe and the non-deluxe version and uh, of both Kirk and Spock. I, I do have sort of like a collection of, of legs um, that has sort of um, sort of sprung up from, from buying the four different versions uh, of those figures from the first wave. So as you can see, I do have um, a fairly large collection of legs here. Um, each of them sort of in their own pose and, and Picard can take, um, can make use of them. Although you will see that the classic trilogy, of course, um, the Starfleet uniform did blouse the, the pants leg with the boot. Whereas with the next generation, of course, they go all the way down to the leg. So this was the set of legs that came with the Kirk that was made for lunging at con. So these actually require a support piece to, um, to use these legs. So we're not going to use these, uh, because you would actually have to plug in a, a clear peg into the, um, the, um, engineering base. So we're not going to use those, but what we will do is we will go ahead and just pop, um, Picard's legs off. And, you know, hopefully what we'll see in the future, um, with other releases of, um, the next generation figures is that the lower half will probably be in a, in a different pose. And then you could swap Picard out with those pants. So we'll move these pants off to the side and we'll, we'll take a look at the different, um, legs that you can plug on. So this of course would have been Kirk's pants, um, of course, Kirk's pose as he was leaning forward, um, shooting with his phaser, um, not unlike uh, Picard here, but um, it, it just leans the, the figure over too far. And unless you're putting them on a base, um, this is going to be sort of um, uh, not very steady. So we'll, we'll take that away. We'll take a look at the, uh, these were Kirk, um, Spock's um, standing um, legs. And so you can see it looks pretty nice, although he does look kind of weird with his pants bloused, just when we've been so used to seeing him without them. Um, and then probably the legs that would get the most use, only because the blousing is sort of hid the best, would be Spock's um, crouching legs. And you could do um, more of a crouching position here. Something like that is, is not so terrible. Um, but that would be one way you could use the, the crouching legs. Um, to sort of connect with him. So all in all, not not too terribly bad. One of the things I'm really excited about is how um, the base interacts. So if you didn't really want to use the Borg base from the Picard release, you could use um, one of the different um, bases. The two um, stone bases here came with Kirk and Spock um, as they were um, the in the store release, the Toys R Us release. So let's get Picard's own legs back put them on him and then uh will that work that's not so bad maybe this one this one's a little closer so let's get him on this base here there we go and there you have picard on an away mission with a stony base so um I, I gotta tell you, um, I'm really digging this series of um, Star, Star Trek Select um, action figures. Um, anybody who knows me knows that um, I am no doubt a Star Wars fan through and through, but I'm also a J.J. Abrams fan, so I do love the new Star Trek figures, and I'm a huge, huge fan of the classic series. Love those figures, and in all, in all honesty, I've never missed an episode of The Next Generation. So um, to be as a big of a Star Wars fan as I am, I am pretty much a closet Trekkie. So um, I got I to gotta admit, I'm really digging this series of figures. I like the size. They're a good seven, almost eight inches tall, a good seven inches tall. They're really, really nice. I like the interchangeable parts. I think that's a really neat um, neat idea, neat concept. And, um, I love the sculpting. Um, I mean, there's some, some misses here and there with the face sculpts, but, um, all in all, I, I, I kind of dig the, uh, the action posey kind of things. Uh, I, I don't mind figures that are like that. Some figures are meant for playing and some figures just look good standing around. And these Star Trek select figures, they look pretty dang good just standing around. So, uh, even though Picard's got some, uh, you know, a not so spot on head sculpt and, uh, a lack of, really some good articulation, like even how Kirk and Spock had, um, had, um, hinge joints on the elbows. I mean, man, I really would have liked, um, sorry, I really would have liked a, a better, um, articulation point, maybe a hinge joint, uh, on Picard's elbow, I think would have been a really nice touch. Um, I think that would have been quite nice. Um, 
Yeah, maybe maybe Kirk's gonna. Hey, hey, don't mind my hand being right there on your hip. Um, I would have liked a, an articulated point right there on the elbow. I think that would have made a big difference for me, um, and maybe an extra set of hands and or lower torso. There's some things they could have added in there. I wouldn't have mind paying a little higher price point to get some more articulated points in there. But that's just me. So um, you know, uh, as soon as we have Toy Fair come around, I'm, I'm sure Diamond Select will will go ahead and uh, and let us know what the fourth figure in this wave is in this line. I can't wait, and um, I, I hope that. You guys are digging this line as much as I am. I plan on supporting it because I want I want some more figures um, from Star Trek. Uh, I would love to get a couple more from Next Generation. Um, I would love a Riker, a Worf, a Jordy, a Data, and then I would love to get some figures from the the new uh, version of Star Trek from J.J. Abrams Star Trek. And I'm sure there's going to be Voyager fans and Deep Space Nine fans that are going to want some like Cisco or Janeway or some other figures in there, no doubt. But um, I plan on supporting this line. I hope you guys do too. So as always, we're going to ask if you dug the video, um, please um, like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check out all of our brand new toy reviews right here on YouTube.com slash UnGrownUps. Or you can check them out at UnGrownUps.com. So until next time, peace.